MMA Fighting presents Timeline, Eddie Alvarez versus Conor McGregor. April 6, 2013. UFC on Fuel TV 9, Musasi versus Latifi, Stockholm, Sweden. The notorious Conor McGregor makes his UFC debut on the undercard at Stockholm, Sweden. He demolishes Marcus Brimage by KO in a little over a minute into the first round. August 17, 2013. UFC Fight Night 26, Shogun vs. Sonnen, Boston, Massachusetts. McGregor's next fight is the 21-year-old Max Holloway, at the time, the youngest fighter on the UFC roster. Even though McGregor was not the main event or even on the main card, he received a champion's walkout, entering the cage to dropkick Murphy's shipping out to Boston. The fight itself is marred by injuries to both sides, McGregor with a knee injury and Holloway with a foot injury. McGregor wins a unanimous decision. You've been the story all week here in Boston. Did you notice that you got a main event type of walkout? They followed you from the locker room with the lights down and everything. Did you notice that? Yeah, they said, they said, because Max was a little bit ahead of me and and then the guy, uh, the guy came up, no, no, Connor, you're going to walk back here. And I said, yeah, like champions. So I knew, you know I, mean? I feel like a champion now. Honestly, man, put me in with anyone, anyone in the world, and I'm, I'm, da I'm dangerous for them all. I'm just looking for my uh, time to prove it, and it will come. Final question, we have a lot of uh, Irish fans, a lot of them waiting for this interview. Our first in person together. Yeah. Anything? Yeah. It is a pleasure. I like the check with the, with the blazer, I, I, I like that look. You're going to see my one now, hopefully, if you get the show at the press conference. You're going to see a real three piece, you know what I mean? You're going to see style, so tune in and take notes. The support out there was unbelievable. It, it was green walking out there. The place was green. It was green flags, fucking leprechauns floating around. <laughs> it was unbelievable, you know what I mean? It was, it was brilliant. November 2nd, 2013, Bellator 106, Chandler versus Alvarez 2, Long Beach, California. In what would be Alvarez's final fight under the Bellator banner, Eddie Alvarez is rematched against champion Michael Chandler. The first battle between the two was considered by many to be a fight of the year. Nobody can, is more excited for me to fight than me. Nobody. And yet another fight of the year candidate, Alvarez wins the rematch by split decision and regains his Bellator lightweight championship belt. I'm going to take zero credit for what happened tonight. It takes two people to put on a fight like that. Uh, not just me, me and, and Mike Chandler and... Uh, the guy fights his ass off. He has, he has the heart of a lion, and uh, it takes two of us to do that. And we went in there, and we put it on the line, and uh, I, I really, at the end of the fight, I didn't give a shit who won that fight. Uh, it was just special to be a part of it. I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. July 19th, 2014. UFC Fight Night 46, McGregor vs. Brandau, Dublin, Ireland. After nearly a year out of the cage recovering from the knee injury suffered in the Holloway match, McGregor returns as the main event in his hometown of Dublin, Ireland. He faces the Ultimate Fighter Season 14 winner, Diego Brandau. One thing I do know is that I have a clear, clear vision that that gold belt is around my waist by the end of this year. At the end of 2014? End of 2014, and I don't know why, it's clear as day that that belt is wrapped around my waist. And these visions that I've been having, like I spoke at the start of the interview, they seem to be coming true. I seem to have a habit of predicting the future, so I will never go against that. I will, I will embrace it and encourage it. What other visions can you share with us? I mean, do you see the 155 pound title? Do you see super, anything else you can tell us? 100%. I see it all, Ariel, my friend, you know? I, I see it all, honestly. I'm coming, I'm coming for the gold, I'm coming for all, all of it. I want, I'm taking over the game. You just sit back, sit back and relax and watch me take over the game. Considering you haven't fought in 11 months, are you almost anxious to get back in there? How would you describe your emotions just a couple days away? I am, honestly, I am calm, composed, prepared. I have never felt better. Like I said, I feel different. Mm. People are saying, all oh, this pressure, you know, I want this illusion of pressure because I don't feel jack shit, Ariel. Eh? I want more of it. So when I go out there and beat this guy and make it look easy, which I will do, how did that guy do that? Let's, I tell you what, let's skip, let's skip the queue with this guy. 
and that that's what it will happen. These things don't happen often. People yeah. say things people dream, but it's very rare yeah. for yeah. it to all come yeah, to fruition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is pretty trippy, all right. I mean, like to think that I said this to you before I'd even had my debut, I was going to drag them back, and now here we are. Before the time that was set, the estimated time, now we're back here. You know what I mean? It, it's crazy how things just form, dreams just form into reality. But now, like, and then, and then when, when I start getting that focus and realise, no, fuck, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this happen. And then now that has happened, I'm, I'm, I'm making it happen. I have a great relationship with my dad. <laughs> like, we talk all the time. And I even see energy in him. And I see energy in my mind. Like, it's depressing times for a lot of people in Ireland. There's a lot of bad stuff going on in, in, in the country. A lot of people are struggling. Everybody's struggling. But now, since, since them seeing me chase this dream, it's given them an energy, and, and, I, and I see a new lease of life in them. And that alone spurs me on even more. So it's all just a perfect storm that is happening for me. And that is why I have this tunnel vision, and that is why I'm willing to kill every single man in my path to get that belt, you know what I mean? To, to secure the future, from my family's future. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I'm doing it for. The Notorious One defeats Brandau within a round, earning another Performance of the Night check. Journalist Kevin Ioli would go on to call this night of fights the greatest event in UFC history. Connor, I've never experienced anything like that. All my years covering this sport, is this the greatest moment of your life? Oh, without doubt, it's the greatest moment of my life. I knew, I knew, like, all week Dana and Lorenzo are walking around like fanboys, you know what I mean? Really excited by this, you know, the Irish crowd, we let ourselves be heard, you know what I mean? We don't hold back, as you could tell by inside that arena. I've been to a good few events now. I've competed on some, and then I've been, I, I've been a guest at others. I've never experienced that in my life. You've even been at more, and you've never experienced it. You know, we are the Irish, we love to fight. Is Conor McGregor for real? 100% man, you know, you know for real, I'm telling people I'm going to do anything. I think now people will start believing? I don't give a shit what people say. I never did, I never do. I told you before if I was the shit, and I'm telling you right now I'm the shit. September 27th, 2014. UFC 178, Johnson versus Carriasso. McGregor makes his Vegas debut. He faces top 10 ranked Dustin the Diamond Poirier. This fight would be positioned right before the co-main event, Cerrone versus Alvarez. September 27th, I'm going to rip, uh, rip Dustin's head clean off, you know. It, ma it makes no difference about nothing. Dustin, a little pea head. Dustin thinks it's all talk. Dustin thinks it's all talk. But when he wakes up with his nose plastered on the other side of his face, he's going to know it's not all talk. My confidence comes from looking around at the division. I don't see anything in the division that troubles me, not one of them. They don't move like I move. They don't think like I think. And they don't talk like I talk. That's, I ha that's my confidence. I mean, is there anyone in, in this room that could fill a football stadium? Is there anyone in the UFC that could fill a football stadium? I'd say there's maybe two, three max athletes that could, in the UFC that could fill a football stadium, and you're speaking to one right now. So there's no doubt I am, I am up there, but again, the fight must take place, the performance must be put on, so I don't read too much into it. I just embrace it and enjoy it and carry on. What do the fans want to see? And there's no denying what the fans want to see. The fans want to see McGregor in for a world title. There's no denying that. So we will see what way they play it. But I will certainly campaign for it with everything I have. And I will go at everyone in the division until I get it. And after a lengthy legal battle with Bellator, Eddie Alvarez makes his UFC debut against top five ranked Donald Cerrone as the co-main event, billed just above McGregor's fight. Yes, you're finally here after 11 years. Yeah, I, 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 told, I told the media earlier, um, I'm, I'm more of a spectator than the spectacle. Uh, I think people are here to watch this fight with, with me and Donald Cerrone, but uh, I'm, enjoy, I'm enjoying every, every second of this. Uh, I remember when I, when, I, uh, when I got to dream for the first time that uh, for me it was just exciting to be there. Uh, but now I'm, exciting, I'm excited to be here knowing that I can, I can beat these guys, knowing I can be, be the champion of this promotion, and that's what adds extra excitement. So um, I'm just more of a, a spectator watching you guys, watching the media and watching everybody um, enjoy themselves. After a strong opening round for Alvarez, Cerrone takes over the fight and wins a unanimous decision. McGregor wins by first round KO in under two minutes. The victory earns McGregor his second consecutive performance of the night check. 
Of course I want that gold belt. Don't try and tell me that that gold belt sitting up right there on this table would not look great to go alongside this ivory elephant trunk suit that I have got on me right now. It would look perfect. I know Dana wants to see it. I know Lorenzo wants to see it. Shout out to Uncle Frank. I know he wants to see it. It's what the fans want. It's what I want. It's what I said. I said I was going to put him away in one round. No one's ever knocked him out. No one has ever done that to Dustin before. He's a great guy. I have nothing but respect for him. I don't just knock them out. I also pick the round. This is, this is all fun and games to me. I love it. I love my job. I whoop people for truckloads of cash. How could I hate this life? I love it so much. I am grateful every single day. January 18th, 2015, UFC Fight Night 59. McGregor vs. Seaver, Boston, Massachusetts. With the UFC promotional machine now fully behind Conor McGregor, he is booked in his first televised main event against veteran striker Dennis Seaver. The showcase fight is booked as a step towards eventually promoting a title fight against the champion Jose Aldo, who was flown in from Brazil to be cage side for the event. What do you make of Jose Aldo being here? watching your fight and perhaps the idea of bringing him into the cage if you win yeah uh, yeah do it no problem i i would have been in the cage in rio only to, he took an ass whooping and he and I, I couldn't go into the cage you know how can i go into the cage when his face is out here and he's but but of course he can bring him into the cage against me because there won't be a scratch on me there won't be a mark on my face i'll be i'll be almost more fresher in that octagon after the fight than jose will be sitting in the in, in, in the crowd so Bring him in and, and, and we can do it. Uh, it means nothing that he is here, you know, really. It's, the individual does not, does not matter to me, you know. It's always, it's always the same. It's a blank face and a new body type and it, it makes no difference. But let, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's bring him in. Let's go face to face and let's, let's make this. Let's, let's, let's get this fight done. Of course, tomorrow night, the Irish invasion continues. <laughs> McGregor fulfills his end of the deal and demolishes Seaver, finishing him by TKO early in the second round. McGregor immediately jumps out of the cage and taunts the champion Aldo. They all think it's fun and games. I'm not playing here. And now, now it's time. Now, now we have, now we have a location. Now Jose is next in line and he will be the next one to learn that it's not all talk and it's no joke. I said I was going to kill everybody and wipe out the division. Now we have one man left. June 13th, 2015, UFC 188, Velasquez versus Verdum in Mexico City. It doesn't get any easier for Alvarez at UFC 188 as he is matched up against former Strike Force champion and former number one UFC title contender Gilbert El Nino Melendez in the co-main event. Final question, is the Underground King title at stake here? Is that what we're fighting for? <laughs> yeah, I guess you can say that. You know, he kind of feels that way, right? He, he's claimed to be that, I've claimed to be that, so, you know, Saturday, uh, I'm gonna make sure I take that title home with me and uh, back to Philadelphia. After a tough first round that saw Alvarez eat a hard shot causing his eye to grotesquely swell, Alvarez used his superior wrestling to grind out a unanimous decision. Eddie Alvarez finally gets his first UFC victory. July 11th, 2015, UFC 189, McGregor vs. Mendez, Las Vegas. After a worldwide press tour to promote Aldo vs. McGregor, Jose Aldo withdraws from the fight with a rib injury, and former number one contender Chad Mendes steps in to face McGregor on just 12 days' notice. Um, you know, my mind is absolutely bulletproof, solid as a rock. I am number one. So if you are number one, who gives a shit if number two steps out in place of number three? At the end of the day, I'm number one. So it makes no difference who is standing across the octagon from me. I will win. And of course, as you said, the fans that have come over here, you know, to make the trip from my home city to here to Las Vegas is a once in a lifetime trip for a lot of people. It takes a lot of a lot of sacrifice and a lot of saving up. So, of course, I was going to show up and compete regardless of who uh, who was across from me. That's why I was willing to take the 155 pound fight, the 170 pound fight, whatever fight was available, I was going to take a fight. So I am happy to be here and I am happy to uh, be representing my country on this stage. 
I am happy to be giving the UFC a 7.1 million dollar gate because it is me who has given them this gate, nobody else. Realistically, realistically, Dave here shouldn't even be up here. I should be on that podium. I should be standing right there. That's, that should be my spot, and Dave, maybe you should be here. Because it's me who's at the bring in all this. 7.1 million dollar gate, highest numbers every time. We have, we have superstars singing us into the octagon. Who do you think got that? Me. Chad is a, an overblown midget. Um, tomorrow night, I'm gonna cut him in half and raise gold for Ireland, for my country. Good luck to you, sir. Conor McGregor, ladies and gentlemen. McGregor KOs Mendez with only seconds left in the second round. Conor McGregor is the new UFC interim featherweight champion. The fight also earns McGregor his fourth consecutive Performance of the Night award. It has been a hell of a ride. Two years, just over two years I'm here. I've already broke every single record in the game and it does not come easy. Trust me when I tell you there's a lot of work involved. It's not just about showing up at the gym. It's not just about that, you know, there's a lot involved. I have been living, in, I haven't been home. I've been home 19 days this year. Um, I've been constantly working, constantly promoting, constantly handling my media obligations, as well as keeping on top of my weight, as well as keeping on top of my skill level, as well as managing niggling injuries. Just, it's a crazy game. And you know, I absolutely love it. I love this job, I love this game, I love this ride I'm on. And I am happy to have uh, taken the gold. It, it would not matter if it was Jose or it was Chad. This was my belt, this was my night. December 12, 2015, UFC 194, Aldo versus McGregor in Las Vegas. Champion versus champion, Jose Aldo versus Conor McGregor. I visualize entering the contest unpredictable. I will pressure him. I will evade him. I will strike him with every limb. The knee, the heel, the fist, the elbow. I will be a ghost in there. He will think I'm there, and then I am not there. He will think I am not there, and then I am there. So. I'm going to put on a masterpiece for this fight. This will, this will prove my point, that I am the number one. McGregor knocks out Aldo in 13 seconds to become the undisputed UFC featherweight champion. The loss snaps Aldo's 18 fight winning streak, spanning nine years and its 10th consecutive title defense under the UFC and WEC banner. What did Floyd Manny do? Four, they're at 4.6 million. No, that was bias. I'm talking about gay. Oh, 72 million gay. 72 million gay. We done 10 point more and I'm catching up. I'm only 27. Them old motherfuckers are 40. But they got that on. I'm only warming up. So, I said to Lorenzo and I said to Dana, I'm bringing these big numbers. I'm bringing these half a billion dollar revenue numbers like the Mayweather Pacquiao fight done. So, at 27 years of age, I stand here as the unified world champion, back-to-back -back gate records in the MGM. This is trending as the highest pay-per-view. Schaller, I believe, said of all time for the UFC. So, at 27 years of age, with every record in the book, with weight divisions above, ready for me to, be, to go at, Super fights left and right. Tell me, tell me one other champion that's been like that. Every other champion gets a belt and they don't want to go up. Or they don't want to go down. I'm going straight up. So, I'm bringing these big numbers and the sky is the limit. Just to clear it up, there's talk of you going up. We don't know what's going to happen. But you don't want to vacate that title. You will not vacate it. No, there's no way. I'm an active fighter. If I was inactive like previous champions or other champions, I'd understand vacating. But I'll go up. And by the time I win the lightweight belt, it would still only be a couple months before well, the featherweight belt is not active. So I am an active champion, so I will keep my belt and I will go up and add more belts. That's what we must do here. There's no vacating. That's, that's not happening. 
I keep my belt. This is my division. Connor, in February of 2013, we spoke for the first time. You didn't have a car, you didn't have a pot to piss in. All you had were blueberries. Yeah. Now here you are with the undisputed gold. Enjoy it, my friend. You deserve it, you called it. Yeah, from nothing to something to everything. So that's where I am right now. January 17th, 2016, UFC Fight Night 81, Dillashaw versus Cruz, Boston, Massachusetts. Alvarez is set to face former UFC champion Anthony Pettis in another co-main event. You know, it's interesting, just a couple days ago, they announced that Conor is fighting RDA for the lightweight title. Uh, the timing is interesting before this fight because everyone I think assumed that this was a number one contender fight even if they didn't come out and, and say it outright. Did that take the wind out of your sails at all? No, I honestly, we never know who's yeah. going to fight next for the title. Um, I would like to think, hey, I beat uh, Anthony, I do what I feel like I can do and uh, hit him nice and hard, submit him and do something impressive on Sunday. I, I do that then I feel like, hey, I, I get a title shot. You never know. I don't know what I deserve. The bosses make them decisions. I don't know. I, I'll do my best to say something completely, I guess, out of character. Oh. Be, be boastful and brag and, I guess, say whatever I got to say. But I need that champion to sign the paper so I can get that title shot. Are you kind of hoping Connor wins in March? Because that's, I mean, let's be honest, he's the bigger name. He's a big Money. draw. Money, right? Money, 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 money. Yeah. The more money we can get this division, the better. You know what I mean? Uh, so far, the title holders, you know, haven't brought too much revenue to the lightweight division. We are the best division. We're the most talented division and, and rich. But uh, we need a guy. We need a guy who's going to talk shit. Right? I, 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 I love, I love when money comes into the picture. Yeah, that's interesting. So you actually welcome him. A lot of people are saying, "Oh, he's skipping the line and whatnot." You're saying no, I, and I think that that speaks to uh, your your business sense. Yeah, this is the fight business. I mean. People don't understand fighting has very little to do with it. <laughs> you, uh, you you got to win fights. You got to do it impressively. You, you always have to. But the the business side of it, it do you really want to make a living doing this? Are you going to be able to support your family? If if that's if that's one of your goals, then you like a guy like Conor to come in a division. You like to bring more revenue to the table and possibly get a fight and make a couple million dollars. With an aggressive game plan of relentless wrestling, Alvarez gets the decision victory over the talented and dangerous striker. I, I want to be more exciting, trust me. Uh, I'm, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not taking guys who are ranked 25 and, and 30. There's a real small margin for error at the top. And um, you can't be going out there being reckless. Uh, when a guy like Anthony Pettis is dangerous, he's talented, but he has a deep hole. So it's, uh, it's, I need to exploit that. And, I'd be stupid not to. Um, so I, I definitely got the job done. If I was able to do some highlights in between, then then that's great. But uh, look, I, I want to do something huge here. I want to get knockouts. It's it's not my goal to do that. It's just I'm going against the best guys and I'm trying to do my best to win and be exciting. March 5th, 2016, UFC 196, McGregor versus Diaz, Las Vegas. Originally booked as Dos Anjos versus McGregor for the lightweight title, the lightweight champ Dos Anjos suffers a foot injury and is forced to withdraw from the card. With only a little over a week until the fight, top 10 lightweight Nathan Diaz is selected to be McGregor's new opponent. The new main event will be contested at welterweight. I'm gonna play with him. Now, he's, his, his entries and his exits, his retreats, his feints, his patterns are all identical. He can't break out of his set routine, so um, he's very, very predictable. I think the speed, you know, people gave Jose the speed advantage, but that was a mistake. I, when the fight began, I had the clear speed advantage. I was light on my feet, zipped in and out. I think it will be very, very evident, the speed difference. I also know he's, he's heavy on his lead foot, but really now he's like an injured gazelle and he's more heavy on his left foot. So these are, these are subtle tales that I, I tell. So I'm gonna go in and play with him. There are many, many shots. The Maya Lua, the 360 roundhouse, the soft body on him. He has a, he has a soft, flabby body like he was a fat guy. You got it all skinny. figured out, but who do you train with? He's a soft. You have no training partner. It doesn't partners. matter. You you have have no again, you, again you you're trying no to pass the line. No like, grappling. 
I train with this guy. Look at him. Go video him. Get that camera away from me. You know, I out That's by a sign of a man who's scared for his life. Of. Man up and be yourself. Right. So. You're like you're like a gazelle. You're a little bunched up together, hoping hoping you that no you get spared. Where's but I'm a lion. At? You knocked out midgets. I'm a lion in there, and I'm Short gonna eat you people. alive. Your little gazelle friends are gonna be staring through the cage, looking at you getting getting your carcass getting eaten alive, and they can do nothing. Out, all they're gonna do is say. No We're never gonna cross all. this river again. Where's your boxing? Who, who do you train with? You got that little goofy motherfucker with you? You got that skinny I'm little for real. Twerp. No, I that got a real training bitch at the real Urban kid, Workout. Real training who do partner? you train with? Top I'd slap the head fighters, off your whole team one by one. Boxers, you and your big brother. Top 10 you you big guys. Brother. Top 10 kickboxers. You don't got, you're playing touch butt with that dork in the park, the ponytail. And I'm the one who ain't got no training partner, I don't think so. You seem to have it all figured out when you're fighting midgets. You got shit. Bring, bring your training partners in, you're gonna need them. My whole team will fucking beat your whole team's ass. How about that? <laughs> Nate Diaz defeats Conor McGregor by second round, rear naked choke. Um, you know, it's a, it's a bitter, bitter pill to swallow. Um, I, I, t- I took a shot, I went, went at it, and um, I feel... I was simply ineff- inefficient with my, my energy. Usually, I fight a man in in the division I am champion in, and they they crumble under those shots. Um, but Nate took them very well. The big the the weight, I think, allowed him to take those shots well. So I think with a little bit of uh, an adjustment and a recognition that the bigger man, you must be a bit more efficient with your striking. You must not put everything into the shots. Um, but I was simply inefficient with my energy. I made some errors. Um, you know, hats off to Nate. He fought very well. He stayed in there. A lot of people have crumbled under the shots, and his range was um, a factor. My right, my left hand was falling short sometimes. The wheel kicks didn't really. My wheel kicks weren't. I threw them and missed them one, once or twice. Maybe hit a glove, and I think they done more to my energy than they did to his energy. And it was simply a battle of energy in there and I and he got the better of that so yeah this is this is the game we win some we lose some I will never shy away from a challenge I will never shy away from um, defeat or you know this is this is part of the game so I'm happy to come out there continue and stay in in this fight I had many chances to not uh, do do this and and sit and wait but um, I went in I, I took I took the fight and it didn't pay off. This is the fight business. It's another day. I'll come back. July seventh, twenty sixteen, UFC Fight Night ninety, Dos Anjos versus Alvarez, Las Vegas. As part of UFC two hundred Fight Week, Dos Anjos will defend his belt for the second time against the former Bellator champion Eddie Alvarez. Alvarez comes into the fight as a plus two fifty underdog. Eddie, when you see stuff on Twitter uh, about your last two performances and how they weren't the most exciting and people criticize you and you see that, uh, have they forgotten that you've been a part of some of the most exciting fights maybe in the history of MMA? Are they, are they forgotten already? I don't, I don't know if people have forgotten, but I don't even know if people have ever seen what I've done in the past. And, and it, it really, there's, it doesn't matter. What's done is done. Uh, whether I did it uh, last week or a year ago, what's done is done. What's, a, what, what's important is the time is now. And... Um, it's important to keep changing. When people think I'm a brawler, I come in intelligent. People think I'm fighting intelligent and safe, I come in brawling. I keep people thinking, keep people uh, guessing. That, that's what the game's about. Frank here, because I've already been working this moment for a long time. And no! <laughs> I, I get all of them. You got all of them. <laughs> I get all of them. And in spectacular fashion, the underground king defeats Dos Anjos at 349 of the first round by TKO. This guy to the right of me is the the best in the division. So uh, to be able to come out with a win over him, and before him was Pettis, and before him was Gilbert. These are the best guys in the division. I'm not taking on top 15 top. So I would I would ask Dana White, please, to give me an easier fight like Conor McGregor. I I I, I just I want I deserve that. I've been fighting the best guys, so I would like it. I would like a gimme fight. So Conor, uh, I'm more than welcome that. August 20th, 2016, UFC 202, Diaz versus McGregor, Las Vegas. 
Originally booked as the main event for UFC 200, the UFC rebooks the highly anticipated rematch between Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor as the main event for UFC 202. Team Diaz for leaving the press conference. Just over here, what do you think from a professional standpoint? Like I said, do you fuck think Team Diaz. And if you're down with Team Diaz, then fuck you too. Connor, this is a huge fight. Perhaps the most important fight of your career. Give us your thoughts on this rematch. He should have killed me when he had the chance, because now I'm back and I'm going to kill you and your whole fucking team. You and them bitch tits. Conor McGregor wins the five round war by majority decision. The grudge match is believed to be the highest selling pay per view in UFC history. It was a hell of a fight. I feel I have more skills. Um, but boy is he one tough motherfucker. He keeps on walking forward, he took every shot, I dropped him multiple times. He just keeps coming, his face was bust open and he's still coming forward. But um, I learned from the last contest, I stayed calm. I bounced the shots off, sh off my shoulders, I stayed tight in the pocket. I knew I was gonna have that moment where he was gonna be in my face and dig his uh, forehead under my chin and start unloading. So I caught shots and, and deflected shots and then hit him to the body a couple of times and it turned the momentum again in my favor. But it was a hell of a fight. Um, he's a hell of a competitor. The whole, the whole lot of it brought out the best in me. It forced me to look at myself truly. I'm just very, very happy with everything. It was a hell of a camp, a hell of a preparation. And we got it done tonight. It was not easy, it was a war. I'm happy it went that way. Um, I got to show my heart in there. Um, I took it to him. And, and, and I stayed in it and, and got the win, so I'm very happy with it. You know, I, I don't care what anyone says. I helped bring this game to another level. You can, you can deny, they can deny that all they want, but I did. Like, look at Nate's pores tonight. Look at Nate's pores after the first fight. Look at everyone's, everyone's game has gone up, money-wise. Um, and I helped do that. So after that fight when I lost, and I'm looking at all these people, and they're all celebrating my demise and saying I'm done and this, and... Um, it, it certainly lit a fire under my belly. Every single person doubted me. Every single fighter doubted me. Doubt me now. September 2nd, 2016. Eddie Alvarez invites Ariel Hawani to visit him in Kensington, the perilous Philadelphia neighborhood in which he was raised. Get it. How do you think that fight goes? Conor McGregor? Yeah. Fight? I don't, I don't, I don't see past the eight minute mark. I don't see anything. I don't see anything but being dominant. I think, I think he can do well because it's easy to be technical in the first round or two. It's easy to be technical, but when the shit hits the fan, it turns into a fight. I will fucking dominate this guy every step of the way. When it turns into when he's a little bit tired and he has to dig down. It's over. It's all over. You think he backs I, I hard? Feel, I feel like if this fight's signed and it happens, yeah. I'm like, I feel like I'm about to tell the whole world that there's no Santa Claus and everybody's going to be disappointed. <laughs> He's a fraud. He's got, there's no Santa Claus. He don't exist. It was a, it was a, um, it was a lie and I'm going to steal the magic from everyone. The magic's going to be gone <laughs> and I can't wait. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great time for me. On November 12th in New York City, the featherweight champ Conor McGregor will face lightweight champ Eddie Alvarez. 
in an attempt to be the first fighter to hold UFC belts in two weight classes simultaneously. You know, I feel Eddie, I've nothing against Careful, him. be careful. I've nothing against Edward. Oh, what? Oh, what? Careful. What you gonna do? Oh, what? You gonna do something over there? Be careful. Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> I run New York. I run this whole shit. And Mystic Mac predicts I'm gonna KO, KO you inside one round. Uh, Connor, can you tell us what you're gonna do with the titles? Uh, Dana said today that you will keep the featherweight belt up until this fight. I'm gonna wrap one on one shoulder, I'm gonna wrap the other on the other shoulder, and you're gonna need a fucking army to come take them belts off me. You've only been to the fifth round twice in your professional career and lost one of them. You're complaining that he has no gas. Qu his no question is, why are you talking, talking shit? Damn. That's his question. Why the fuck you up there talking shit? Say it like it is, you're blessed. You're blessed that I chose you. You're blessed that I chose to whoop your ass next. Say it like it fucking is. You were the easiest opponent that made the most money. That's the truth. Come prove it. You were my easiest opponent that made it. the most money. Come prove That's it. That's why you were I picked. could buy and sell That's your whole you fucking town. I could buy and sell your whole bum town. Come fucking prove it.